First of all, persons living with disability. And as, as I engage these three groups, um, I want you to be thinking about you as a media practitioner because you are the only remedy to bringing government to accountability. Well, the parliament will not, and because it's under state capture. The judiciary is being fought. And who has been all the while bringing this to the, to, to the surface and uh, enlightening people? It's the media. But so, with this first group of people, persons living with disability, you know, whether it's visual or physical or auditory or whatever the case may be, the question is, do they have access to media? The average blind person enjoys radio because they can hear. Do they have access to radios? The truth of the matter is no. If you put out information in a newspaper about debt, and the newspapers are never printed in Braille, I mean, I love to read. This, this is Braille. Who has ever thought about a special edition or something, some, even if you priced it a little higher? Okay, you may not want to do Braille. Maybe you can do audio. What audio provisions do you have for your newspapers? So they're closed out of uh, information. So if you ask the average blind person, do you know what the national debt is, they'll probably not know. Because you're putting out information as media, but it is not reaching them. And Kenya is doing well compared to other African countries. Uh, because at least for me as a blind person, I came in with my laptop, I can go online and search the Daily Nation or the standard newspaper and read it electronically using a speech software. But how many blind people have access to laptops? It's easier to promise primary school children laptops and not deliver them than to access laptops for blind people in this country. It's the most liberating tool. A lot of you may not have watched the uh, video on my channel that uh, is titled how, does, how Ruben Reads and Writes. When I use the iPhone, I have access to a couple of applications like uh, VoiceOver or um, um, Siri, which is a dictation program. And with that, I get some limited independence. So that if uh, I was scrolling using VoiceOver, I can pick up the latest tweets, like I do, and I can pick up you know, my WhatsApp messages, or I can pick up both good and wrong media on Facebook. So it's all there because it's accessible. Accessibility is key for journalists. It's not enough to put out information. You must ensure it's all there. Sometimes, I, I don't know, for, for me, when I was doing my uh, MSc in journalism and media studies, there was this one professor that would come to class and he would start teaching and he would go, you know, uh, imagine this is the, the blackboard. So today we are going to talk about, and I'm wondering, talk about what? And he's writing on the board. And this is supposed to mean this. And when this happens, then it leads to this. What is this? So that is how some of us cast news. When we write our scripts, we only write for the visuals. How about integrating our scripts in such a way that they are descriptive enough for someone like me to follow without seeing the pictures? You could do something like that. And thank God, now most stations incorporate sign language, and that is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. 
Now, supposing I had a story though, and I needed to bring to uh, your office as a media house, and you are on ninth floor of a building, and it's all stairs. How does a wheelchair get there? I hope it's accessible so that you can get the information but also give access to information. What challenged me was what Ruben said about having a newspaper in Braille. Uh -huh. and I actually would like to follow it up and see if we um, sure. can come up with such a thing. I discovered yesterday we have 26 million blind people in Africa. Uh -huh. That's a really big audience. Uh -huh. Yeah.